PowerPoint up. This is Dr. Rosenblatt, who is one of our hepatologists here at the Center for Liver Disease and Transplant, and he is going to be your speaker today. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm very informal, so I, I am Russell. Uh, I'm one of the liver transplant docs. Um, I think I see some of my uh, friends here, so good to see you. Hey there, hey there Mr. Collins. Um, anyway, so we'll get started. We're going to talk about hepatocellular carcinoma, which is liver cancer, the most common liver cancer. Um, we're going to go over what is HCC um, or hepatocellular carcinoma, the risk factors, how we look for a screening, how we diagnose it, um, what we do when we diagnose it, and then how do we treat it. So what is HCC or hepatocellular carcinoma? It's um, the most common type of liver cancer. Um, it's one of the only cancers that's actually becoming increasingly common. Um, and it's the second leading cause of cancer-related death. It's more common in, in Asia and Africa where there's very high rates of hepatitis B because hepatitis B is strongly associated with uh, HCC or liver cancer. Basically, um, any uh, thing that causes um, injury to your liver um, that causes cirrhosis uh, can cause liver cancer. Um, so any, so non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, hepatitis C, um, generally you're not thought to get um, hepatocellular carcinoma or liver cancer unless you have cirrhosis. Um, the exception with that is hepatitis B, but otherwise um, you're, you're really not um, at risk of having uh, liver cancer itself. Um, but that's really that. Um, in terms of screening, so screening, when we screen for tests, um, Screening is different than, um, we don't do a test rather every time we screen. Um, when we screen, we specifically are looking for tests in patients who have no symptoms. So your doctor may have screened you for liver cancer. Um, and what the doctor is doing there is looking for liver cancer before you have symptoms. Um, so what we do is we screen for cirrhosis with an ultrasound typically. Um, and Everyone on this call, I'm sure, has had an ultrasound before, uh, but we look for this specifically in people with cirrhosis already or certain patients with hepatitis B. We do this twice a year, um, and sometimes we get other tests. Sometimes we get MRIs or sometimes we get CT scans. That's typically if there's some other concern. Maybe they saw um, some uh, small little lesion or small, small tumor and were worried and trying to differentiate what exactly uh, the tumor is, we may get an MRI or CT scan, but the screening test is typically done with an ultrasound every six months. And the way we diagnose uh, liver cancer, or HCC, is different than other uh, tumors. Um, and this is good for, I guess, for us because we don't biopsy patients often. Um, very rarely do we biopsy to confirm liver cancer. What we, in fact, usually do is get a CT or an MRI. And they have very specific characteristic findings that are diagnostic, meaning we can diagnose it without a biopsy needle. So a biopsy needle would be a needle stuck into your liver. We don't have to do that, which is really, really nice. Okay. So what we see here, just to give you an example, this is a characteristic finding. So we look for a spot in the liver, which we see is very bright, when we give contrast. And then when the contrast washes away, we're left with this darker look. It's called a washout. So that, that finding washes out. And this is very characteristic. And this also has a little capsule around it. This would be characterized or diagnosed as a HCC or liver cancer. So what do we do after we diagnose liver cancer? Well, we do a few things. One is we first make sure that it hasn't spread um, anywhere else in your body. And the two most common places it spreads um, outside of right next to your liver and the lymph nodes are the lungs. So we get a CAT scan of your chest or the bones and we get a bone scan here. Here is what a bone scan looks like. Um, it will light up in a certain area if there uh, may be a, a metastasis or a spread to one of your bones. Um, it can also spread to your abdominal lymph nodes, but we see that when we do this, the CAT scan or the MRI. Um, and what we do is we follow that with some frequency. With the seat, the CAT scan of your chest and bone scan, we usually do that every six months, typically, um, and, and uh, just to follow. 
How do we treat liver cancer? Well, there are a few different ways we treat it. If you um, don't have advanced liver disease, in some cases we can do a surgical treatment where we can take out a small piece of your liver. That's, that can be curative, um, but that's not an option in many people. So what is an option in many people um, is what we call local regional therapy. So this is done by our interventional radiology team and they put a catheter in. You can see here is one of your blood vessels. Here's a catheter. Um, and they go in through your hepatic artery, which is one of the blood vessels that feeds your liver. And they find the artery that feeds the tumor. And then they inject either chemotherapy or they destroy the artery and they starve and try to kill that tumor. So it doesn't grow back. And what we wanna do is we wanna, the more tumor we kill, the less likely after your liver transplant for the tumor to come back and for us to cure you with the liver transplant. So frequently what we do is we do a couple of things. So one is we do um, an interventional radiology, that local regional therapy um, to burn or kill the tumor. Um, and this will, um, oh, one sec, sorry. Okay. Oh, sorry. Hi, Ivan. I didn't realize you were here. Um, so what we are, um, so we do the local regional therapy to cut off the blood supply or burn or inject chemotherapy into the tumor to kill it. Um, and that helps reduce the risk of the tumor spreading and make, it can make you live longer. And it can also make you live longer until you have your liver transplant and reduce the risk of your liver transplant coming back, or, excuse me, reduce the risk of the cancer coming back after your liver transplant. Um, and when the tumor is too big um, to safely transplant you, what we can do is we can do this treatment to kill it and shrink it and get you within the staging or, or the, the size and the number that we like that keeps it safe, that we know a liver transplant is safe at that point. Um, we talked about the resection. That's when the surgery is, takes off a part of your liver um, to, uh, that can be curative. Um, if generally, if, you're, if you have... Um, if you can get a liver transplant or if you can get a liver resection of your tumor, that's generally curative and you usually don't need a transplant after that unless the cancer comes back after your resection. So far, is everyone with me? I'm sorry, I'm gonna take a second and just look at everyone all at once. Any questions? Anyone raise their hand. must be doing a great job. No smiles? Wow. Tough crowd, you guys. All right. Um, so when is liver transplant the right treatment? Well, we ha have specific criteria that were from the from uh, Milan, from a hospital in Milan, created in and this criteria is created in 1996. We used to do transplants for um, liver cancer um, and really had, to be honest, had a lot of doctors and teams had no idea what they were doing and they would transplant people arbitrarily and the tumors would come back very quickly and it would be horrible. Um, and then the surgeon in Milan, um, Mazafaro, basically created this criteria where he said, if you have one cancer tumor under five centimeters or three tumors under three centimeters, it didn't spread outside the liver and it wasn't in your blood vessels. If we transplant you, you will do incredibly well. Um, so what uh, that, that's basically the way we manage this now. Um, and, um, you know, transplant um, previously, this actually, this slide is wrong. Transplant previously used to not be an option for people who had tumors that were too big. Now, if your tumors are a little bigger, we can treat your tumor, bring the stage, we call it downstaging, get you into the Milan criteria. So if you have a six centimeter tumor, we can treat that and make it a three centimeter tumor, and then you're within Milan criteria, and then you can um, be a potential transplant candidate. Um, so a little brief word about exception points. Again, this is actually, we gotta update these slides. I made these slides, uh, I think five or six years ago when I was a fellow, so. Um, the way we give out liver transplant organs um, is with the, the is based on the MELD score. So the sicker you are, the higher your MELD score, the more likely you are to get a liver transplant. 
However, people with liver cancer, their MELD score typically doesn't reflect their risk of dying of liver disease. So what we do is we give them exception points or extra points. So please don't write the scoring system, the score is numbered down, that's, that's incorrect. Now what happens is when you are listed for liver transplant with uh, hepatocellular carcinoma within the Milan criteria, you get 28 points right away, okay? There's no, you don't go up or down. After you have to wait six months after you're, you're listed and then six months after you're listed, you get 28 points. You don't get 29, you don't get 27, 28. Um, and then from then on, you are put in order of timing you are on the list. So if patient A is diagnosed with liver cancer and listed um, in June and patient B is diagnosed with liver cancer and listed in January, the patient listed in January will be a little, will have the same number of MELT score points, but it'll be a little higher on the transplant waiting. But 28 points is high enough to get transplanted. So when you reach that exception point number of 28, you should be expecting to hear offers for transplant that week. So what about the circumstance if I feel fine? My cancer was treated, why do I still need a transplant? Well, the reality is um, we wouldn't put you in the transplant evaluation if you, we didn't think you needed a transplant to extend your life. Um, but more importantly, why do we think that? Well, the reason we think that is because Patients with cirrhosis who develop one episode of liver cancer are very high, are very high risk of developing another episode of liver cancer. And maybe this liver cancer may not respond to the same treatment as effectively as the first one did. So you are just waiting to develop another liver cancer, which is very dangerous and not something you want to wait and find out too late. Um, there are other criteria where if you have certain characteristics that put you at higher risk than the average person, we have tumor markers called alpha feta protein that is a higher risk. Um, and that can also put you um, at a high risk. Um, I'll explain that in a second. And so these are reasons why you should get a liver transplant, um, even if you feel fine. And a lot of patients with liver cancer feel fine when they're listed and even when they're transplanted. But that doesn't mean they don't need a liver transplant to live longer. I just want to go back for a second um, and address um, a comment, sorry. So when you are diagnosed with liver cancer and then you are listed and put on the wait list, you can apply for exception points, okay? But we list you at your lab laboratory MELT score. So let's say patient A gets, um, gets uh, you know, gets uh, accepted for listing on Monday and is listed on the liver transplant waiting list with an exception score of 28 points. But on Wednesday, he gets really sick and his MELD score, his actual MELD score jumps up to 30. We would not wait six months. He would be listed at a MELD score of 30 and we, he may get transplanted sooner. But most patients who have liver cancer who qualify for exception points typically do not get sick like that. And typically we transplant them using their exception score. So the short answer is we don't wait um, everyone doesn't have to wait for six months, but if you're going through the exception score route, that you have to wait six months to get your points. Okay. Uh, what do we do after your transplant? Well, we make sure um, that your liver cancer doesn't come back. We get MRIs of your liver, CAT scans of your chest, and bone scan to check for metastasis. Um, we do this roughly uh, twice a year for the first uh, few years. And then uh, once a year after that, and if after five years you're home free, then you are home free. And you should live your life and enjoy and not worry about liver cancer ever bothering you ever again. Um, I think that's it. So just to summarize, liver cancer comes um, up in patients who have cirrhosis um, or hepatitis B. It's becoming increasingly common. We have a lot of treatment options for it. The curative treatment options are surgery to remove part of your liver and get the tumor out, and also liver transplant. For most patients who are diagnosed with liver cancer who are going to get liver transplant, they are treated by interventional radiologists with 
either um, we call it local regional therapy, where there's cancer uh, chemotherapy directly injected into the blood vessel, or it's bur or the tumor is burned um, or ablated in some fashion, and then we get them down to where they have the least amount of tumor possible that they can handle. Um, we then to reduce their risk of the liver cancer coming back. We then also um, list them for the MELD exception points where you have to wait six months and then you get the equivalent of 28 points. Um, and then after your transplant, we watch to make sure the liver transplant, the, the, excuse me, we watch to make sure they have had a cellular carcinoma does not come back. I'm gonna let everybody unmute themselves so that if you have